suppose uh, looking back at Belgrade, the first thing that jumps out was the heat to me. Um, it was so warm, and you know when we arrived, it was probably a bit of a surprise. We knew it was going to be warm, but it was so humid, so heavy. And um, we trained the night before, and it was really, really difficult uh, environment to train in. Uh, another thing I suppose that caught me particularly was the size of that club. We knew it was a big club because Partizan Belgrade, but I suppose arriving there on the day of the game and the crowds and you know the the stadium was half full probably before we'd even come out for the warm-up uh, and then when we did come out for the warm-up the reception we got was you know really intimidating huge crowd whistles that was just coming out for the warm-up uh, i remember also in the changing room before the game really really old stadium really dated you know um and the heat there was no air condition it was just absolute roasting those lads walking around just little and nothing on before we'd even go out for the warm-up and it was probably an argument we didn't even really need the warm-up because the bodies were absolutely i well, was sweating it was hanging together in the change room before we even went out for the warm-up so from that side of it that was certainly something i remember uh, the game itself i remember ryan having a couple of absolute worldies and in fairness on the first half probably could have or should have been the game could have been over from their side of things and um, I think as it went on and they didn't kill us off, our belief started to grow and uh, and I suppose it kind of, you know, that was all given a huge lift down by Sully's unbelievable goal, once in a lifetime goal. I think when that went in, I think that was a kind of a moment we all really started to believe because you could see them starting to wobble. You could see the crowd getting on the back um, and to score a goal like that in such a huge game at such a huge moment. just gave us all the lift because up to that point I think we'd had a couple of half chances I think Moz had a header at the back post you know at the start of the second half or in the first half even that but outside that we didn't have a lot so it was going to take something special for us to create and score a goal and, and, and with Sully's goal that's that's what actually that's what eventually came and once we got that goal everything changed I remember them you know they were getting at each other on the pitch the crowd were at them uh, the manager was very animated um, and uh, I know uh, something that st sticks out to me as well, I think Stevie, Stevie O'Donnell, late on we were hanging in to get the extra time if I remember, like they were bombarding us in the last probably five, five minutes of the game uh, and I remember Stevie O'Donnell I think made an unbelievable block on the line really late on uh, to, to kind of take us to extra time. Mm, extra time, I think, was a very similar format. I, I remember Ender was was very good that night. Ender Stevens, he was really good. Uh, I think it was probably uh, it allowed him a lot to get forward quickly. In extra time, he got a lot of ball. I think they played with a diamond in midfield, uh, so it allowed both Sully and Ender to to get a lot of ball. Uh, the the goal, I remember the goal then. Uh, I remember Ender pick. Uh, I think it was end a little clip over the top, and at that stage, Kilduff had come on, and uh, and of course Killer, like he's he's unbelievable at running in behind back lines and threatening. He's so quick and strong, and, uh, and to have to be able, Michael obviously seen it and brought him on, uh, seeing that they were tiring as they would be an extra time, and you know, and we went a bit more direct, went over the back of them with a couple of balls from end and one ball particularly, that ball that that the goal comes from. Um, great ball from end, a great run from Killer and Sheppy obviously supporting around the game. But uh, if I remember my initial reaction when when Shep went down was was it a definite penalty? Was it a penalty? And <laughs> I leave that to, to, to Shep. I think he, he made the most of what we were delighted when we seen the ref pointing to the spot. Um, and then I just remember the the celebrations with Stevie when he scored when he put it away it was. It was kind of like we were celebrating, but we probably didn't realise what we were celebrating. It was kind of like we we knew we were ahead in the toy. We knew then that they needed two goals in the last whatever it was minutes, and we knew we were on the brink of something special. But it was still one of them things. They were so good, and they were such a good side, huge budget that you still couldn't kind of relax. And they were at the bit bombarding us before that with chances um, and 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 just dominate us possession, particularly in extra time. Uh, and then after the goal, I do remember the, the midfielder, I think it was, I think he kicked out at someone late on, was sent off. They'd lost at that stage when he was sent off, then we knew we kind of 
looked at each other we knew I think he had a kick out at Chrissy Turner or something and we got sent off and, and uh, at that stage then we kind of knew right why they were just you know they were down to 10 men the crowd had torn they were gone we just needed to, to see it out at that point um, I suppose the final whistle was just kind of surreal in that you know there was only probably you know when you, when you achieve something like that you, you always imagine it to be in front of a huge crowd in front of your home crowd or a big crowd of traveling support but I think there was only 50 50 odd Shamrock Rovers fans there at the time and they were up in the main stand, kind of at the back of the main stand, if I remember correctly. But I just remember all the lads getting together on the pitch and uh, unbelievable feeling. And you couldn't even hear the Rovers fans because there was so much, uh, so much noise and so much whistling from the whole crowd. And we were just shocked, nearly running to each other celebrating. Um, and then there was certainly an element of, you know. I think if their their players kind of were slow to go off initially because of the reaction of the fans, and I think we were kind of holding back a bit at the beginning, uh, that we didn't want to go off. Obviously, in terms of trouble or what trouble there may be. So I think then when they'd gone in, then or certainly they were straggling in and kind of getting a lot of a lot of stick from the fans. Then we kind of went over together, kind of as a as a as a group. And we knew we were ahead in the toy. We knew then that they needed two goals in the last whatever it was minutes and we knew we were on the brink of something special but it was still one of them things they were so good and they were such a good side huge budget that you still couldn't kind of relax and they were at the bit bombarding us before that with chances um, and, and and just dominate his possession particularly in extra time uh, and then after the goal I do remember the, the midfielder I think it was I think he kicked out at someone late on, was sent off. They'd lost at that stage when he was sent off, then we knew we kind of looked at each other. We knew I think he had a kick out at Chrissy Turner or something. And we got sent off and, and uh, at that stage then we kinda knew right why there just you know, they were down to ten men. The crowd had torn, they were gone. We just needed to, to see it out at that point. Um I suppose the final whistle was just kind of surreal in that you know, there was only probably you know, when you, when you achieve something like that, you, you always imagine it to be in front of a huge crowd, in front of your home crowd, or a big crowd of travelling support. But I think there was only 50, 50 odd Shamrock Rovers fans there at the time, and they were up in the main stand, kind of at the back of the main stand, if I remember correctly. But I just remember all the lads getting together on the pitch, and uh, unbelievable feeling. And you couldn't even hear the Rovers fans because there was so much. Uh, so much noise and so much whistling from the whole crowd and we were just shocked and nearly running to each other celebrating um, and then there was certainly an element of you know uh, I think if their, their players kind of were slow to go off initially because of the reaction of the fans and I think we were kind of holding back a bit at the beginning uh, that we didn't want to go off obviously in terms of trouble or what trouble there may be so I think then when they'd gone in then or certainly they were straggling in and kind of getting a lot of a lot of stick from the fans then we kind of went over together kind of as a as a, as a group and uh, and actually really something that I always remember was that when we were walking in the changing room or walking up the tunnel after the game that you know their fans began to applaud us and kind of nearly appreciated that you know part-time team had beaten you know a club like that even though the club the, the fans were fanatical and they were unbelievable and the passion and the intensity that they had throughout the game uh, was was unbelievable but for them then to to turn and nearly you know to be uh, clapping a club like Shamrock Rovers off the pitch who were at that time a part-time club and you know didn't uh, couldn't compete with them financially I think it showed a lot of the of the people and and also a lot of the achievement that they turned and and, and were willing to to applaud us off the pitch. Uh, yeah, the change room was mental. I can't even. Yeah, it was just mental. Although, I mean, I think there was a lot of lads dehydrated, just so warm, just kind of sitting down trying to take it in, trying to process it. And I know we got on the bus and uh, back to the hotel, and there was a lot of things on the bus. If I'm not mistaken, lads were saying, "Well, what happens now?" You know, we didn't. Uh, if I remember, I think it was probably the first year that the Europa League had come in, or certainly only maybe it wasn't the first, but maybe in the start of the second. And lads were saying, well, "What happens now? And do we, you know, are we? Uh, what happens?" Type of thing. Nobody kind of knew because there was probably a big expectation going over there that we would have been beaten, or certainly wouldn't have won the toy. Um, so 
that was that was, was and then we had a, a really good night out in Belgrade and of course then moved on but I think it was a, it was a special time for the club and a special time for us as players and something that even when you talk about now and you remember little things it certainly brings back great memories and something that certainly I know the players will never forget and I'm sure the fans will be the same.